Hey Tappers, let's talk today about change. Change again, Oh, I know. But I continue to have little nuggets that are different and illuminating on this ongoing subject. So yes, let's dive in. In the last video, we talked about choice and change and how they're different. In case you missed that, here's a mini summary. Choices are when you are presented with detailed options with clear outcomes and you pick one. Change is when you are shifting the current status quo with a varied amount of details and potentially no clear outcome. When change is put on hold, it is typically because we are trying to make change act like choice. We want to collect all of the data and know all of the outcomes ahead of time. When they aren't there, we wait, sometimes forever, because with change, those rules don't apply. When the status quo is changed, there's a ripple effect from that change and it's usually unpredictable. So deciding the outcome can be very tricky and taxing if you are attempting to control all of the variables that pop up due to the change to try to make it end where you thought it should when you began the change. So alleviate yourself from that expectation right now and change immediately becomes a learning experience with room for trial and error and multiple tries and changing your mind along the way, rather than a solitary set destination that if you don't reach it, you are doomed to make this change a failure. Change is not linear. Change is amorphous. When you decide something needs to change, you may not have any more than, I don't want this anymore. Or you may have a vague concept like, I want to learn to cook healthy food. Therefore, two things are dire to supportive change, and they are a spirit of curiosity and confidence that you will know when you need to land. So let's make an example to clarify. You want to learn to cook healthy food. There are endless options on what that is. Grass-fed meat only, no meat, period. Organic, non-GMO, raw diets, juicing, supplementation, the right cookware, no nightshades, no gluten, caveman diet, keto, powders, shakes, probiotics. It's already too much. Instead of attempting to approach it like a choice and finding out every detail before you take any action, take your change out for a little stroll. What strikes your attention most? Cookware? Do you need a new pan? Cool. Dig around a bit. See what you want to try. Then get that. Now what? Oh, hey, the pan came with a recipe cookbook. Sweet. Maybe try something enticing in that. Oh, but it contains bell peppers. You still don't like bell peppers. So whatever other changes that happen, can't rely on eating a lot of those. You know you really enjoy rice. Are there any healthy lifestyles that encourage eating a lot of rice? If you need some more strict boundaries because, well, you know you will otherwise wander the ether of possibility forever and you want to be more succinct about it, give yourself a deadline. A deadline that doesn't have anything to do directly with the goal. It's about food, so give yourself a time deadline. By next month, I'll have two meals I'm consistently making with my new pan that are decidedly more healthy. But Amanda, that's not change. Yes, it is. It's not making a choice per se. You don't have all of the details figured out, but it is change because it is different than where you were and a dang good beginning on your journey. You dove in asking questions with a basis of curiosity and you knew where to land, not bell peppers. Incorporate rice amongst the millions of choices. Good job. Keep going. Eventually, all of your changes will form into your choice of what cooking healthy is for you. I hope this helps. I'll see you soon.